Okay, so just to continue where I left off. Um, in the last video I was discussing uh, Britain's dark past, public hangings in this country. It's quite a morbid subject, but it's something that is important because it is something that is still debated today. I.e. whether or not we should bring back capital punishment. So I was giving a little bit of a history lesson on the history of capital punishment in the United Kingdom. And I intend to make a series of these videos because there is quite a lot of things to cover. So I was talking about hangings and um, there was a character called Jonathan Wilde um, who was a thief taker general. This was somebody who, if you ever watch the series Garrow's Law about the lawyer William Garrow who by the way developed the, or is attributed to the phrase innocent until proven guilty. There was a series a few years ago called Garrow's Law which was an excellent um, look into 18th century justice. Um, at the beginning of the 18th century, uh, a bit before Garrow's time, Garrow was the end of the 18th century, um, Jonathan Wilde was one of the most famous criminals to be executed in London at Tyburn. And there's uh, a, an image of his execution which basically shows him on a cart and uh, members of the public basically looking at him as he's dragged through the streets of London well I guess not dragged but brought on this cart he seems to be holding a bible and uh, the population is very very hostile throwing rocks at him and um, according to one account uh, a rock actually cut him on the head and um, it's quite a graphic account but the image basically shows women looking out of the windows and men on the street throwing stones at him so these sort of public executions were major events equivalent to a pop concert today. Um, the word would have got around the city that uh, a well-known criminal was going to be executed. There would have been posters. Um, and it was a big opportunity for a lot of trade to be done. People would have, uh, uh, for famous criminals, there would have been actually copies of their biography sold, official or otherwise. Um, there would have been uh, a lot of uh, gin sold at the side. Gin was the most popular drink of the day. Um, there would have been, um, like I say, a lot of opportunities for pickpockets. So the argument about a deterring crime is actually rather ironic when you consider that. Um, I also mentioned in the last video that crowd safety was a major issue. And ironically, public executions were finally abolished in the late Victorian period, not because they were inhumane, which I believe they were, but because of a safety issue. That was uh, actually the the thing that made them abolished in the end. Because there was widespread public support for them. That's a raw reality. There was widespread public support. But this is where I think that um, it's barbaric. Because that sort of capital punishment actually brutalised society. Um, Charles Dickens, who was strongly against the death penalty, at least that's that's the indication from what he wrote, um, described it in detail and he talked about fightings and scuffles and all sorts of people of would have turned up at public executions. Now the idea was that the law didn't discriminate. The argument was that um, aristocrats could also be executed. But that's a big misconception because the vast majority of those who were hanged were dirt poor. They were the lowest of the low. Um, and public executions were truly barbaric events. Dickens expressed how, how sickened he was to see it. Um, I think he said something about basically... Um, not in these exact words, but he spoke about karma would hit London for the sort of uh, for public relishment of this sort of entertainment. It's very hard to comprehend that, that people actually saw this as a form of entertainment. But then again, when you see the mentality of some tabloid readers today, it's not inconceivable that there would be people in Britain today who would happily go to a public hanging. Uh, the nearest example geographically we have is Iran. 
Um, there are executions in a lot of parts of the world, but Iran is one of the most primitive examples that still uses public executions. Um, China executes more people than ev anywhere else, but most of those are private executions. Not that that makes it much better, but the public aspect is a particularly barbaric aspect to it. Now, if you look at what happens in Iran, you see the sort of brutalizing effect it has on the on society. There was a, a child killer executed a few years ago, and the crowd demanded that he be hanged again and again, as if the bloodlust wasn't enough. Now, it's not that I have any sympathy for child killers. They're fairly evil people who should be punished. But, and like I said in the last video, I do on some way there's some crime so heinous that people would advocate the death penalty. I do understand that. But I do believe that public executions brutalise society. I think executions all around brutalise society because in America um, you get situations of although executions are not entirely private because the victim's family can watch but um, they do get turned into media events and there's something very sick about that in my opinion. So I'm very grateful this country abolished it a long time ago. But there is a lot of people who would want it brought back. So anyway, back to Tyburn. Um, it's hard to imagine the absolute terror that must have went through the condemned before they were on the scaffold. One of the things they were allowed to do, which was sort of the equivalent to the last meal that American inmates would get today, uh, they were allowed to have a drink at, uh, I believe it was called uh, Tabard Arms, or there was a famous pub that was along the Tyburn Road, whereby they were, and again the film uh, Plunkett and McLean is very good at depicting this, um, there's many accounts of felons getting absolutely stocious and legless. You can understand why. The more popular inmates, uh, felons, in many cases had huge support. And in some cases they w would even have made a speech and worn the best clothes and things like this. But the more unfortunate criminals, those who were less popular for one reason or another, would have been physically attacked by the crowd and they would have been jeered and it would have been a very, very ugly sight. And by the way, this wasn't... Um, children would have watched this as well. They were family days out. So it's not like there was a restriction on who could watch it children would be watching this spectacle. Um, if you really want to know the truth about it, um, before the time when there was a drop execution, the inmate may well have uh, urinated. They may well have um, actually uh, done their business, to put it a polite way, as the rope fell and as it dangled there. So this was an incredibly degrading form of death. Um, and in my opinion, it was utterly barbaric. So, consider what we sort of talk about regarding human rights today. Um, and Britain, quite frankly, does tend to lecture other countries, but we shouldn't forget that it wasn't that long ago that we um, done some pretty barbaric things ourselves. We should never forget that. Now, I'm not saying Britain's like that today. Obviously, it's not. But there are people in British society today who have come out with statements like that. The organisation Britain First has advocated public executions. Now, in my opinion, that automatically disqualifies them from any legitimacy as a progressive force. And, by the way, it makes them absolutely no better than the Islamists they claim to oppose. Public executions brutalise society. I believe the death penalty generally does, but especially public executions. And the idea that some people think it would be a good idea to bring it back is utterly outrageous. I mean, if you look at the account of what happened to Jonathan Wilde, now, let's be clear, Jonathan Wilde was no saint. He was probably an evil man. He saw a lot of other 
people go to the gallows through probably deception. He was probably a fairly nasty individual. But there's no difference in my opinion from what someone like him done and what the state done to him. I see no moral difference. I believe in punishment. But I don't believe that justice should be about revenge. Although sometimes it's entirely understandable. Then they make us clear. If someone murdered a loved one of mine. I would be in no mood for nice words. I would probably want their blood in all honesty. That would be my human instinct. So I think it's wrong for liberals to sort of... Um, vilify people who are pro-death penalty without trying to understand their position but likewise I think those who support the death penalty and actually I shouldn't even say liberals I'm, I'm contradicting what I said in the last video because it's wrong to to pigeonhole someone in a certain way because I mean it's not a simple case of conservatives are for the death penalty and liberals are against it there's conservatives who are also against it as a centrist I'm against it I don't call, consider myself a... I don't call myself a liberal. In fact, on crime, I'm a conservative. And my... That's... <laughs> I often condemn lenient sentences. But... The death penalty is barbaric. In that sort of context. And it brutalises people in the... Being desensitised to what it actually means. I mean, it's easy today to say, oh, certain people deserve that. But I, I do really wonder if the people who say that would honestly be prepared to watch another human being die in that way, regardless of how despicable that person may be. And there's the other argument, of course, about innocence being executed. But even if we play the devil's advocate and say most of those who are executed are guilty and they've done heinous things, does it make society better um, wanting their blood in that sort of way? I really don't know. And I think that when you consider the sort of things that happened at Tyburn, utterly barbaric. By the way, the worst uh, sort of safety incident came in the year 1807 when as many as 50 people and possibly many more were crushed to death at a public hanging at Newgate. Now Newgate was the... Uh, sorry, I went off a bit on the tangent there about the rights and wrongs of it, and I did say I didn't mean to do that. Newgate was the other location for public executions in London. Um, there was a bit more control at Newgate because it was in a more... Uh, there was more buildings in the area, and uh, so therefore it could be policed in a better way. Tyburn was a bit more of an open area. But there was public executions at both locations um, at Newgate up until 1783. And uh, then um, executions started moving more indoor, although public executions wouldn't end in Britain until 1868. But from 1868 till 1964, like I said in the last video, executions were private. Now there's a very good film called Pierpoint. Uh, about Britain's last hangman, Albert Pierpoint. And that film shows a very interesting thing, which was a change in public attitudes. Um, and it goes through his career. Um, by some accounts, he hanged more than 400 people. Um, he took a very workmanlike approach to it. Um, he didn't often give his opinions on the subject, but when he did, the indication was he got nothing from it. He was not... Um, what you might expect. He got no bloodlust from it. And he certainly didn't have the sort of opinions that you might see in the Sun or the Express. He came across as quite a humble, I don't want to say humane, that would be the wrong word given the sort of work that he'd done, but not the stereotype of what you might expect a hangman to be. Anyway, there was a very good film made about him with um, Timothy Spall in the lead role, a, an excellent actor by the way. Very good film. And um, it focuses on a lot of notable cases, but shows how public attitudes changed from the war years when he was responsible for hanging a lot of Nazi war criminals. Um, and even then, he showed an interesting attitude. He he insisted that it had to be done with dignity, 
there's one scene in that film where there's a younger guard sort of pointing out Nazi war criminals and saying she was the the black angel of Auschwitz or whatever. Um, and Pierpoint got angry and said, I don't, I'm not interested in a crime. I just want to do my job and that's it. And he gets angry when he finds out there's no coffins available for them. So what Pierpoint was saying was he wasn't interested in the crimes these people had committed. He wasn't there to pass moral judgment on them. He was there to play, to perform his role. So Pierpoint was a very interesting individual. He never, as far as I know, came out and said that he was against death penalty. But I believe he did say that he believed far too many people were executed. And he did make some very interesting statements on it. So when away in the film it shows that in the 40s, people treated him almost like a hero, which made him very uncomfortable. But by the 1960s, there was a much more hardline attitude against the death penalty. And at that point, people were treating him like a murderer. He was being publicly reviled. There's a very emotional scene in the film where a mother approaches him and she's found out that he is going to be the executioner to execute her son. And she pleads with him to to not do it and that's a very emotional scene it shows he's obviously feeling very um it's a very good film if if you want to know about the death penalty and you want to you haven't decided about it i strongly recommend that film because the film i think shows both sides it's a biographic film of albert pierpoint but it really shows well okay it's probably more against the death penalty but it does it does show in raw detail what it was like um, the last executions in this country. One of the people he executed was Ruth Ellis. Um, the public largely supported her because they regarded her as being a victim of a brutal boyfriend. She ended up killing him. I think she was the last woman to be executed in Britain in 1958. Um, so that's an excellent film if you get an opportunity to watch it. Just a quick word whilst uh, I'm still on the sort of bandwidth. Hanging wasn't the only form of um, capital punishment in this country. During the 16th century, a very common form of execution was burning at the stake. That was very often for heretics. The 16th century was marked by a religious schism between Catholics and Protestants, almost to the point of civil war, um, especially during the reign of Queen Mary, which is one reason she's known as Bloody Mary. There were dozens of people burned at the stake because of their religion, basically. This was a particularly barbaric form of death. Sometimes relatives would try to be humane, and they would try to m get it over and done with by throwing on as much onto the fire as possible. Um, the film Elizabeth, um, which is the first film before Elizabeth, the Golden Age, starts off with this sort of scene, and there was many martyrs through the church that that were executed in this method. It must have been an incredibly agonizing form of death. Another particularly barbaric form of death in the reign of Henry VIII was literally being boiled in oil. There are accounts that there were some people boiled in oil. I think it was reserved for poisoners. Now, there's one state in the world that is alleged to have still done, do this, to still do this, and that is Uzbekistan the dictatorship of Islam Karimov. Uh, human rights activists have alleged that he has boiled suspected Islamists alive um, because their their marks of the corpses have been consistent with scalding victims. It's very hard to prove in a country like Uzbekistan but that's quite honestly when you think of how brutal some dictatorships are I wouldn't put it past them. Um, so to think that we actually done this, albeit a long time ago, but nevertheless part of our history is heinous. Burning at the stake, of course, was not just for religious heretics. It was also a punishment for alleged witches. When you had uh, the witch hunting frenzy of the 1620s in this country, there were many innocent women and some men burned at the stake. Um, and this isn't a video about... Um, witchcraft about witch hunting but they they also were persecuted there was hundreds of women and like i say some men as well who were executed in this method by this method um one execution for traitors william wallace is a famous example 
was to be hung, drawn and quartered. Now the drawing and quartering, sometimes that would take place after death, but it was a particularly barbaric form of punishment. If you ever go to Prague in the Czech Republic, there is actually a museum about torture, which demonstrates some of the methods that were used. Different European countries use slightly different approaches, but it was like a competition to see which could be the most barbaric. Um, Britain was no exception. So I'm going to leave it there, but we should never forget in this country we had a very dark past. And in my opinion, no matter how despicable a crime is, we should never, ever allow this to come back. I do believe that inmates should be punished, but the practical arguments don't weigh up. Because if it was a deterrent, it didn't stop Jack the Ripper, it didn't stop the Moors murderers, it didn't stop a whole host of other serial killers um, before it was abolished. So the idea that it puts off potential killers, rapists, paedophiles, etc., is a lot of rubbish. These people are psychopaths driven by a desire to kill. So the idea that they could die themselves isn't going to put them off. That's a practical argument, and a moral argument is it brutalizes society. I believe in punishment. I do not want to see a return of the death penalty in this country. Let us never, ever forget our dark past. In the next few videos, I'm going to be talking about other forms of punishment that weren't necessarily the death penalty. So keep an eye out for them. Sorry these videos are quite lengthy, but I think the subject na nature makes that important.